You know, Trump, both the right wing and the mainstream media seem to want more uh, specific specificity from Kamala Harris and what her economic plan is going to be. After all, you're in the right house for three plus years and they want to have that debate. And supposedly Trump wants that debate as well. And, you know, I've always thought, wow, all the numbers based on the capitalist indicator indications, which we're still that society says that, wow, the, the, the Biden Harris administration really, really cleaned up after the mess created by Donald Trump. Donald Trump liked to say, I had this great economy, etc. And people kind of buy it because they, they, they believe that bait and switch that things were great right before the pandemic. The pandemic came, messed things up, and somehow Biden continued to mess things up. That is the kind of thing that they want to say. Reality is uh, uh, Trump was a continuation of an ascendant economy that that Obama gave him. He did very little other, other than giving a huge tax cuts to wealthy folks. Uh, inflation was still fairly stabilized then. Then came the pandemic. The economic crash didn't just occur because of the pandemic. It occurred because of Trump, this complete bundling, bungling of how one should handle an impending and incoming uh, epidemic that then turned into a pandemic. I mean, he should have learned from how Obama took care of his potential pandemic, how even Bush took care of his potential pandemic. You know why you never heard about it? Because they allowed science to reign and do its job. They didn't try to create false ideas. So in him not allowing science to reign and going around the world to start mitigating the prevention of the mitigating the, the spread of a pandemic, we got the worldwide economic crash. We can all we can definitely put that on Trump's back because the United States should have taken the lead in 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 uh, preventing the spread of this pandemic before it became a pandemic. But again, now Biden did what was necessary, flooded the economy with a Keynesian style economics of since people aren't working, since we don't want people to work, etc., we want to flood the place with money. And that way we recover quickly. Now, of course, inflation was created because those who control price and power knew people had money in their pockets. And guess what they did? They raised prices. And what's raising prices? Inflation. You know who gets it? A Republican gets it. A Republican said, you know what? Kamala Harris should welcome an economic discussion, a real economic discussion, where she can actually come out and say the success that they've had with the Inflation Reduction Act, which went ahead and revived the economy, the infrastructure bill, which went ahead and created a lot of new high paying jobs, and also the, the, the uh, chips bill, which went ahead and start bringing back manufacturing of chips, etc., to the United States. Let's have that debate. Our country, the United States of America, from an inflation standpoint, from a manufacturing standpoint, from a GDP standpoint, is doing better than any other Western country that follows our particular type of capitalist system. You know, I don't like the system, but that's what we have. So we are, have exceeded any other country. So there is something to speak about. Let's listen to what this former Republican is saying, because he was able to enumerate all of this eloquently. And then we'll take it on the other side. Do you think Trump and some of his supporters believe that the key to victory actually is, I don't know, painting such an apocalyptic vision of where the U.S. is right now, that he becomes the change candidate. He becomes the one who can make it all better. Yeah, the textbook theory, dispassionately, is called negative partisanship, that he would run a campaign saying, Vice President Harris is worse than I am. You should be scared of her leadership. But Trump turns that into some racist, xenophobic narratives that reach for some of the darker elements in American culture. And then he also does the Chicken Little theory of American carnage. Chicken Little worked in 2016, but Chicken Little by Donald Trump's not working right now. 
And Chris, I would love to see more of a debate over the economy. We actually didn't see a lot of uh, debate on the economy because I think Vice President Harris and, and the Biden administration have such a strong response to that. Donald Trump wants to play on inflation. The entire world suffered from historic inflation coming out of the pandemic and U.S. policymaking around it. But the U.S. is the envy of the world in its recovery. More people went to work this week than ever before. Home ownership remains at historic highs. The stock market is breaking records. Inflation's coming down and real wages are going up. Access to health care and education is at historic highs. And investments in infrastructure are unlike anything during the Trump years. So if Donald Trump wants to actually have a policy debate on the economy, I think Vice President Harris should welcome that. And I would also suggest there's a lot more room for Vice President Harris to run on that. We didn't see that on the debate stage when she took the question, are you better off today than you were four years ago? Yes, we are for reasons of the Biden-Harris administration. It would be a wonderful debate for this country to have in the last six weeks of this race. So yes, let's have the economic debate. Donald Trump, we know, can't have it because he can't string a sentence together. Those who follow him are ideological puppets. They're ideologically gullible to believe that just because he is who he is, that somehow things are going to be okay. The truth of the matter is this, there's, uh, there are two things that need to be said. The economy always does better under Democrats, and it's not an accident. It's because of the way their economic policies are designed. It's not designed to throw money up to the top and hope that the rich people have mercy on those below and somehow create jobs for them. That's not how it works. You give money to the bottom, create the demand, and those who have the capitalist structure to, to fulfill that demand gets it done. Folks, we have to rethink economics. We have to rethink what we have learned about economics because what we have learned has been pushed by the plutocracy. And what we have to do going forward is educate ourselves Understand that the current economic system is a fraud and, the, and make the changes to this economic system so that we think people first and ensure that the economic structure that surrounds the people thinks humanity first. And that's how we all succeed. Remember the motto, there is no billionaire that isn't a parasite. There is no billionaire that is not a parasite whose fortune was made on your back. And that's not envy. That is not, that is not feeling that the, uh, you know, somehow I want it and, and I envy what they have. That is simply a mathematical statement of fact. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.